Okay, and we're off. Hi. Um, welcome to uh, my Qigong page. My name's Nicholas Blewett. I uh, run a little business called Qi Fit, um, teaching Qigong and Tai Chi, and basically educating people on what Qigong is about, because it's not well known in our society yet, but it will be. Um, personally, I believe Qigong is going to be as big as yoga given time. Um, just generally due to the fact, uh, what I've seen over the last maybe 15, 15 years, and especially in the last five, the more people I talk to, the more I put it out, the more I find Qigong um, is taking off. And I believe there's a whole demographic of society who, um, who I've spoken to are like, oh, I'm not really much of a yoga person, but I tried Qigong once and I love it. And so that's really heartwarming and to know that um, as Qigong becomes more popular, I find people coming out of the woodwork who have done little bits here, little bits there, um, and are really hungry to know more because they've experienced for themselves um, how powerful a practice it can be and how um, simple but also complex and um, how profoundly it can affect our lives. So I've been giving a little bit of a talk um, at all. I've been working in a, um, in a chronic pain hospital here on the Gold Coast in Australia for um, maybe around eight, nine months now, um, which I was asked to, sought out and asked to go and, and, and teach at. And since being there, discovered how much of what I was talking about um, with Qigong, my own feelings, my own experiences, um, were really being, hi oh, Joyce, really being um, also expressed and explained by the pain science that was coming out. One of the physios who's done a PhD there in pain when we talk, um, he's really excited to have me on the program simply because we're almost an echo chamber for each other but coming from different paradigms. And so it's really interesting to see, and I do see on um, social media and movement culture and different things, how much of this information is filtering through. And I think I may have mentioned in my last talk that what I see is um, through looking at these trends and looking at the science and looking at the body hacks and bits and pieces that are coming through that a lot of these um, are all in the sphere of Qigong. And so the more I look at it, the more, and the more I read, the more I research, the more it really confirms within me that Qigong is a way of growing the human body and this is really a lot of what I'm going to talk about tonight so the topic is literally um, deleting physical and emotional uh, pain and discomfort and almost spiritual trauma from the mind body matrix our body um, using Qigong and I want to discuss and explore using little Qigong techniques and methods um, to give an idea about how this is embodied and how Qigong teaches us a way of being and a way of growing, and a way of embodying health, um, human growth, and, and even, uh, I would argue, evolution of um, the human being. Okay, so, in my experience, and sorry, I'm gonna read this a little body because I wanted to write up a quote, um, uh, a little passage that I, I think. So, for me anyway, the more and more I refine this concept, the more I think about the essence of Qigong, and I know there's lots of schools out there and a lot of people that make Qigong very esoteric uh, and very spiritual because it's about energy, which I'll go into tonight, to um, ground this concept of energy back into physical reality, which is where, of course, it can help our body. Um, that for me, Qigong is about accumulating power in which to grow the human body into positive tensegrities. These tensegrities mould our connective tissue and nervous system back into a naturally aligned geometry with forward intent. And I'm going to unpack that whole statement. So I'll read it again, and I won't look at the camera and try and go back and forth. I'll just read it from the board this time, right? So um, Qigong is about accumulating power to grow the human body in positive tensegrities, which mould our connective tissue and nervous system into naturally aligned geometries with forward intent. Okay, so what this is what I mean about Qigong is growing the human body. And 
In Qigong, we're taking on certain postural and physical structural rules to pull our body into alignment and then applying movement principles to begin reconnecting whole body movement to the way that the mindfulness of our mind integrates with this movement. Um, when we do this and we grow into our body and we can um, begin to align everything and begin to move, that remerging of the physical body and the mind has a really powerful effect on the way that our body grows. So in, in today's society, we have a lot about um, physical exercise, you know, nutrition's huge, um, uh, and people are into all sorts of therapies like Chiron Physio to crack and mold things into, you know, put things into position. Um, and I just wonder if underlying all this, there is a way to actually inhabit our body. And so, again, as I mentioned, I saw all these different science things all kind of pointing to Qigong and all these, like it may be the way that we uh, embody our hips. And as we're moving through our hips, I've seen a lot of people, and I see it a lot in back pain, where people, and I'll stand up out of camera, sorry, but the hip area here on people gets really tight and jammed in, and this, and this diamide, this girdle meridian that runs around here, their bums get super tight, like they're really clenching their bums, and their back lose mobility. Qigong, and, and doing certain exercise in Qigong, and just even standing Qigong, would help to open the hips and release this tension that's clenching down and causing everything to be compacted and all the nerves to be to be um, impinged and, and all the muscles to be super tight to actually open it back out and allow the pelvis to be in a tense segregate or in a, in a tension pattern that promotes the growth and development of an area. And so I sometimes wonder if, whilst I know nutrition's good and whilst I know a lot of ways that we treat our body good, are they as important as creating these positive, these positive tensegrities? And so I'm going to use the concept of tongue position, which is something um, that I've been researching a lot over the last 12 months under the topic called mewing, M-E-W-I-N-G. Um, have a look on YouTube after this clip. It's really interesting. And this is one of those little pockets of science that I'm seeing come through that really helps to underpin some of this natural, humanistic um, um, embodiment way of being. And so in the 2,500-year-old Taoist Chinese classic of medicine, uh, the emperor is talking to his um, advisors, and they talk about the ancients in that book using Qigong to um, develop themselves and to evolve. And so that concept that I'm going to explain in a moment with this mewing is about how our head actually develops, the space inside our brain, the way our jawline develops and our throat develops, allowing more air in, um, the way the tongue posture sits on the top of our mouth um, actually creates tension on the upper palate of our mouth, which grows our jaw wider, which grows our face forward, uh, allows us to intake more air, and is generally a really good cure for like sleep apnea and snoring. And we know how detrimental that can be. And so in our mouth, the tongue muscle is actually meant to be pushed up against the roof of the mouth. Okay, so if my teeth were hanging down where my wrist is here, my tongue would actually come up and sit just behind my upper front teeth like I'm pronouncing the letter L. Now, when people do this quite often, they'll have the tongue there, the tongue tip pressed up behind the front teeth, but the tongue's actually relaxed down, and they're doing that because it says in Qigong to put the tip of the tongue behind the roof of the mouth. But it actually says put the tongue on the roof of the mouth in other translations, which is bring the whole tongue to push against the upper palate of the mouth, which of course causes your jaw and your whole mouth to open wider. You get forward face growth, the um, airways open up, the fontanelles on the head grow larger, the ear canals have more space, the sinuses open up. Um, I believe even the eye socket pressure can be released um, and people, if you can maintain your tongue there consistently, um, day and night and only breathe in and out through your nose, there's a whole host of things like blood pressure that drops. Um, it works the, um, 
vagus nerve so your body will deeply relax and all these little things all these tiny little minute things fall into place when the tension of the tongue is maintained in a um, firm way and I say firm because it's not tense it's not like you're pushing it with muscular force but the tongue actually ends up learning to be in its full position but soft and relaxed and we're going to go into this soft relaxed state which I know I mentioned in the last talk quite a bit a little bit later on through this talk but my main point is that the tensegrity of the tongue is just one tiny aspect that we're doing in our qigong practice that is actually designed to evolve and grow the whole shape of the head and the whole throat it's got to do with neck posture and shoulder tension as well and so it's literally about growing the body into the correct shape now if you listen to the theory of these guys who talk about mewing the idea is that when we started farming and when we started building houses and moving indoors because we we're in enclosed space with a lot of dust particles our sinuses actually got more infected and so we got mucus and so we started putting our tongue on our lower palate and became mouth breathers with our mouth open and that means the tongue has to be on the lower palate mouth open and we're breathing in and out our mouth now there's a great book by James Nestor called breath which goes right into this um, nose breathing um, and how it is so detrimental for all these other tiny little elements of our physical body um, like blood pressure and nervous system and all these other things that pile up the biochemical reality of our body starts to suffer if we're not just breathing in and out of our mouth and so in this in this talk they're actually um, in this book sorry and what people are doing with this mewing thing is actually putting some uh, sporting tape over their lips at night and sleeping to retrain themselves to breathe in and out through the nose and keep their tongue on their upper palate and I tried this for a couple of weeks and I've been really paying close attention to this until I had dental surgery a week or two ago um, but I really started to notice that a lot of things started to change for me and after about a week and a half two weeks of maintaining tongue posture and breathing through my nose I actually started to bring up a whole heap of mucus which I know polite right and and but you know that really dark stuff that kind of it's not out of the back of your head and when you get out you're like oh where's that been sitting but like I hadn't had a cold or anything like that but then a few days after that it was like when you've been in the cold weather and you take an in-breath and you know when the cold kind of stifles the back of your sinuses it was like that my sinuses had become so clear and it was simply because of how I was holding my tongue in and out uh, on the upper palate and breathing in and out through my nose it held correct tensegrity and so this tensegrity of our body how we hold our posture and how we move is how the rest of the body forms its tensegrity so what I want to talk a little bit about now is how we grow into shape okay and this idea of our connective tissue and our fascia system now I put a video up a few videos down something with a spider web and I mentioned how pulling the, the, the spider web was like the fascia or the connective tissue so if you can imagine like a spider web it acts like a framework for the body like a scaffolding on a building almost a, a scaffolding that holds our body upright now this scaffolding is built like tiny little geometries the three-dimensional spaces created by the different um, you know intertwined spider webs create a 3d uh, structural network that literally holds us up now in this video I show that like if you could imagine quite a nice open spider web actually I did bring a whiteboard because this might come in handy let's see how I go and if you can actually see it so I'm just going to draw a really simple spider web like that you oh you can't really see it can you I'll explain it don't worry about it. okay sorry about that okay so you've got a spider web and the spider can crawl through each of the holes of the web because the web's nice and open as the spider spun it. it's a natural tensegra it's exactly the way the spider designed it and it's holding its shape perfectly now if I rip apart that spider web off wherever it's anchored to and move it the web of course will crumple and the holes inside the web will shrink and distort and twist some might actually get bigger but some might get really tight and thin just depending on the way that the tensegrity is twisted and pulled and warped out of shape which means that when these holes get too small 
the body can't quite fit cells through anymore, so it has to find different pathways through. This may be something as simple as like a knot, you know, a knot in your muscle when you go for a massage. That knot, that tissue is so boundly caught up that actually getting the body to irrigate that area with fresh cells and remove all the damaged cells out becomes a little bit tricky. And so these areas closing down is caused by the different ways that we might hold our body in different patterns. And what's doing that is different tension fields in the body, different tensegrity patterns. Now, I like to think of tensegrity as having a positive forward growth. So the geometry of that pattern allows for a progressive movement forward of growth and development and negative tension fields, which create a tension pattern which basically creates disease. Yeah, it shuts down things, it warps things, it twists. The body isn't in a natural shape. When it's positive and open, that tensegrity allows the person to grow into their natural shape, into the way that their body should, and grow into the full expression of that body. But if the body is holding negative tension patterns, the body doesn't start to form as adequately as it should and will begin to grow itself and actually grow that structure around the defects. So if you constantly guard your shoulder and pull it forward, your body as it renews cells and as it regenerates is going to start building around that structure. Over time, literally hardwiring that into the way that your body is built. So what Qigong is about, it's about learning to open up the tensegrity into a naturally balanced state. And so those tension patterns can actually be deleted from the body. Now, we've got to do this in a little bit of a counterintuitive way than what we kind of do under a Western mindset. So I even read something the other day on Instagram, I think it was. You know when you want to comment, but you just go, nah. <laughs> I did one of those. And this guy's thing was literally, um, a tight muscle is a weak muscle. And I guess he's kind of right in a sense, but he's just was, you've got to go and strength train that, that muscle because it's, uh, I was kind of like, um, um, no, let's look at a different way. And so this idea of softening into our open structure, as these tension patterns um, cause our structure, our shape to crumple, we need to open up this crumpled state and come back into maintaining a tensegrity that allows for the growth and development of our physical body, much in the same way that holding the tongue in the correct posture helps for the growth and development of the head in the right way. And think about what humans need to survive and think if you've got more air getting into your body because your, your throat's grown open, more power to you, right? Ah, get more power to you, literally. You can gain more power over your environment. If your fontanelles grow more open and your head can fill up more and your, and your brain has space to fill into, and I've actually read this in the mewing stuff where they discuss that the fact that certain changes in the shape of, in the skull might mean that the inside shape of the skull and structures that allow parts of the brain and bits of pieces to sit in, I'm not that technical, sorry, actually can't grow and develop into those areas because there's not the space. So if our brain could develop properly, if our eyes have got more space, if our ear canals aren't, aren't getting smaller, and so our jaws grow open and more wider. So all these different changes are happening to allow us to grow into the shape that our DNA, that our body was designed to. And so I'm gonna come back into a quick idea to underpin this with some Chinese theory. Uh, and this theory in Chinese is called the Jing Qi Shen. I did mention in my other talk, but I'll just refresh it. So our Jing is a very rarefied substance. You can think of it, if you like, as being your DNA, just, just for this talk. It's other things as well, but let's just go with that for now, right? It's your DNA, okay? Then we have Qi, and the Qi I want you to think of as your meat suit, as the biological physical reality of your body. I know in Chinese writing, chi means energy, right? But 
this is the energy this is the biochemical energy and this is causing all those changes and all those chemicals to create other any energetic changes in us like real energetic changes and there's real physical matter so we that physical matter is the chi it's the energy of our body okay then we've got our shen and our shen is our mind or our spirit and this is the idea of the evolutionary part it's the part of us getting smarter getting um more connected um, uh, with mind and body. So the idea in this Chinese theory is that the jing, kept in our lower dantian area in our kidneys, we liberate the jing through doing our qigong. So the qigong begins to get hot and it begins to come up and it becomes qi. So that jing is telling our cells what, you know, telling our body what cells to make. The DNA is creating our shape of our body, right? It's building the qi into the shape of our body building us forward and then when our shape and our body grows into a good open tensegrity our mind and body are evolving in such a way that the shen builds okay because the shen is also an expression of our structure it's expression of our chi and they even say that in the chinese classics that you can think of shen as being the radiance or the expression of chi as it accumulates so as our body accumulates, as it grows into a stronger, more robust, more powerful creature, also we get more intelligent. And it's really interesting to bring it back to this tense segregate of the tongue because one of the big ways to, to tell if this tense segregate of the tongue is working or not is actually jaw shape. Um, and what's really interesting about this is They've done research into jaw shape and what it means for people's ability to lead. And in West Point, the American Army Group, I remember watch, I watched this when I was really young, like a teenager, a show on West Point, how they chose generals. And, and I didn't even put it together, but I remember very clearly that they said that they chose generals from the shape and size of their jaw. And so, you know, in, in Greek mythology, and I know from reading a lot of comics, that when they're depicting people like, you know, um, big superheroes, they put these big jaws on them. So it's like this unconscious thing in our, our society that people with big jaws are leaders, they're strong, they're robust, we trust them. And all these other unconscious human aspects that happen because someone has grown their body in a certain way, through holding their body in a certain way. And so really what this concept of the Jing Chi Shen is this idea of if we can use the genetic impression we've got, hold our body in such a way that the chi that we develop builds our body into a nice open, nice strong expression of our genes, then our shen and our intelligence and our capabilities and our skills increase, which means then we've got better life skills to protect our gene and pass it on to the next generation, but also for ourselves, then we can use that new informed because we're always downloading to our DNA, right? It's like a little program. So our Shen downloads that, then we can create more from that Jing by getting our Qi to form into a bigger, stronger shape that builds us more intelligence. That intelligence allows us to download to our DNA and to create uh, a pattern that is built up by the Qi, which then, and so as you can see, that Jing Chen Shi cycle continues. And this is what Qigong is about. It's about holding specific uh, postures, specific, state, specific states in our body to gain more power and to grow into a more powerful beast whilst deleting all these negativities from our body. So let me just talk about forward intent for a moment. Then we're going to talk and we're going to do a drill. So forward intent, I've never heard discussed in Qigong before, but is actually a big part of internal martial arts. Um, and I actually find that watching Qigong stuff and, and, and whatnot online, I actually find people that have done internal martial arts have a richer context of some of these concepts. And so this forward intent is the way that we can position our body against an incoming force, so against a partner, right? Hold our shape and hold our tense and inhabit our body that has a state of not fighting back, so it's not force back, but there's pressure pushing out, okay? It's like a boundary, but it's not pushing out, it's resting in the one spot, but it has a tensegrity which 
makes you feel like you kind of want to go forward, which is meant by forward intent. So the idea, and excuse me, I will talk about martial arts through my talks because hopefully it gives, and I'll bring it back to why this is important for Qigong in a moment, so bear with me. So if someone was going to attack me and they put pressure on my arm, I want that pressure to actually you, I can't believe I'm going to use this term. Use their force against them by moving my body in a way that allows me to re-attack where their input has created my output. And I haven't tried to do that. It's been an effect of the incoming force. Okay, This is a way that our body can actually create a geometry or a structure within its frame that allows this soft relaxed spongy force to be radiating or emanating from our body this is important for the human body and what is what i mean about the evolutionary state the ability to grow forward where our we're literally trying to grow our body into a state where it's growing forward where the problems that it encounters an analogy for someone may be attacking you maybe it's just uh you know um, stress from work um, you know, personal problems in your life, the things that are coming at you, growing forward as opposed to being hit by everything that, 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 that comes at you, you know, being smacked around by life. It's about having a body that's adaptive. It's about growing forward in, into the problems and, and finding and weaving your way through life without having to necessarily backtrack. That Taoist idea of, you know, just rolling with the punches and just moving through life in a forward way, like a river going down the stream, just finding your way around the obstacles. That's forward intent. In many senses, it's like Wu Wei. It's that idea of you're not doing anything, but you're doing something because it has a forward growth. A forward growth. I think that's a nice way to put it. Okay. So, we're going to look at, um, Qigong has three ways to regulate the body. We have regulating the body posture, regulating the body itself. Um, we have regulating the breath, that's number two. And number three would be regulating the mind. Now, for most people, I actually spoke this to my last client, which was interesting. Regulating the mind, let's just throw that out for now, all right? Maybe if you've had 10, 15, 20 years, ascetic monk meditating in a cave, okay, maybe you can just sit down and regulate your mind, but regulating the mind, keep more for knowing when you should and shouldn't do things in your daily life, you know, oh, I shouldn't have that thought, oh, I probably should do that, you know, regulating your mind, knowing the good things you should do. When we're meditating, I think it's a good, it's good to just work with the body and the breath and not have that impetus that your mind has to be still, has to be relaxed. Because as we know, most people here are probably meditating and they're like, oh my God, my mind's doing even more. All right, I'm gonna shut up my mind. Oh my God, now it's doing even more because we're trying. So I'm gonna give a little process using um, the body and the breath and to harmonize the body and the breath, to make them one and play a little game that engages the mind to drop the mind out. Because the mind will then be engaged in a process. It's not doing specific Things it's not it's playing a game. Games engage us, and, and games teach us because they're fun. Okay, so you may have seen on my page I've got little stuff about breathing, um, but we're gonna we're gonna learn about correct diaphragmatic breathing, um, and literally how the body breathes and why it breathes like this, and from a qigong perspective, what this does for us. Now, excuse me, I'm gonna change seats because I don't think this one's gonna be too conducive for what I want to do. This is better. Yeah, that's it. Right, cool. Okay. So, um, the body should breathe. Quite often, you know, we're just sitting on the couch with our legs up with the remote control. You know, nothing's really happening. We do, you know, the lungs are moving, but the body's breathing, but it's not the body breathing. When most people do diaphragmatic breathing and they say belly breathing, they're generally just putting their abs in and out and doing more of an ab. You know, open and closing thing, expanding their belly and pushing it out. That's not necessarily correct either. That will happen, but it's better to actually learn and isolate the diaphragmatic muscle itself. It's a postural muscle. Um, it helps to regulate the vagus nerve and also has a really strong action at um, 
bringing chi out of the upper body where we get trapped in our thoughts and we get anxious and stifled in our chest and actually getting energy to move down. It's, the, it's that middle point, moving the energy up and down through our body. So we want this thing to move. Most of us probably, if you find this difficult, probably haven't used it enough to have the neurological connections to get this muscle to really work. So now we're going to put our hands just flat on our ribs. Okay. Now my sternum has ended and my little ziphoid, my little pokey ziphoid thing would be under it. And I would have that arch just here where my ribs come up and join the top of my sternum. So on my hands on either side of that, if I just come here for a second, you'll see my hands are on either side here. They're not touching. The first breath we're going to take is actually an out breath. And we're going to get the ribs to fold in, down, and back. So we're actually causing this compression like that. You see the compression? I didn't actually breathe out then. The compression, called, the compression here causes my diaphragm to push up in the tension pattern, which pushes against my lungs, empties the air. Then I open my lungs by opening my ribs forward and out. That causes the diaphragm to come down, which of course closes out the space of the organs, which makes your belly come out. Don't try and push your belly out really far. Allow your belly only to move the amount it needs to move for the diaphragm to come down. Then we breathe out. You'll notice when I do that, oh, you notice when I do that, my fingers come in and now they're just about touching and then I breathe in and that all opens up. Breathe out. Breathe in. See how my body is now implicit in the breathing. It's actually causing the breathing to happen. Try it. Don't breathe in or out, but just cause the right movement to happen. The breath came in. Not going to breathe out, just going to compress my, my ribs. All the breath's gone. In. Okay, so our body should be doing this all the time, causing this to happen. Now, I hope you're still going there, so, so keep going. If you've, if you've got that action happening, just keep going while you listen to me, and I'll, I'll do things with my hands, talk with my hands, and wave them around, talk about other things. So... I call this Pac-Man breathing, okay? And you know Pac-Man, waka, 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 goes around the maze, it's, it's, the, it's the power dots, right? I like the analogy of Pac-Man, but first of all, we've got a 3D Pac-Man, right? Pac-Man's mouth just opens front, up and down. Our Pac-Man opens front, up and down, and you'll feel that if you're still doing, you'll feel your body as you compress, that come close together and they open. And they open. So we're getting not only vertical Pac-Man, but we're also getting like some sort of weird, creepy alien Pac-Man who's got a mouth that's opening that way as well. So we've got Pac-Man mouth moving this way and a Pac-Man mouth moving this way. Now, as I said, chi is about gaining power. And if we talk about cultivation of chi, the idea of chi cultivation is that we're packing chi into our body, okay? And this goes into the compression style drills I give in my Chi Fit program where the movements that start out quite big get compressed because we're literally compressing a large amount of Chi into our body. And this compression, soft compression, so not like tense compression, but soft compression allows for this density to increase in our body without tension. It's almost like a dense Segregity, a dense segregate as opposed to a tense segregate. It's what we're trying to create in our body. So packing in chi into our body is this concept of chi cultivation. Okay, so our Pac-Man, our body, is opening, diaphragm comes down, body pulls air, and keep going this, this motion while, while I'm talking, yeah, so you can feel it. Okay, so you've open, 
Pac-Man has pulled the air into his body, and when he closes his mouth, he's compressing that chi dot into his body through the natural mechanics. Opens up, pulls air, pulls the chi dot into his belly, compresses that energy down. And this is the idea in that Jing Chen Shi cycle where we compress energy in the body till the Jing piles up. When Jing piles up, it builds the Qi. When the Qi builds up, it becomes the Shen. When the Shen builds up, comes back down, becomes Jing. This process continues. Jing builds up, Qi builds up, Shen builds up, comes down, becomes Jing. So that's what we're doing here is we're bringing in air and, or, and Qi into our body and compressing it down. Now, I don't have one here, um, and this isn't quite right, but you know like in science labs, um, when they've got those big geometric shapes that go down really small, and then you open it up and they, they expand really big, and then you go down, it's kind of like a, a dome with all the little geometric shapes, kind of like a soccer ball um, pattern, and it can go really big and really small. This is what we're doing. The 10 secret isn't too bad at it, where we're opening up, we're pulling chi in, and then we're compressing that tensegrity down. When that's happening, the stress and strain that's falling on that structure, it's opening up and going down, those joints, the connections are getting stronger as they open and close, as they release and compress and release and compress, causing this tensegrity structure to be mildly opened, and then close, and it's this idea that we're getting happening with this breathing, okay? Pulling the air in, letting the diaphragm come down, compressing in, down, and back. Now, if you can't do this well, and you can't really get much movement, now, I'm also exaggerating a little bit for the session, right, so you can really see. I want you not to exaggerate too much, but just find out the natural movement of your body. Don't um, try too hard, right? Especially if it's your first time and it doesn't feel too natural for you. Gentle, gentle. Remember, explore and play with yourself. Don't go and try and, and you know, do it too big. So, open up. Sucking chi in. Compressing it. Open up, compress. So this can be done even lying down on a, on a bed, and it can be done, and it should be doing when we're, should be doing, good English, should, we should be doing it when we're standing, doing our, our standing Qigong, or even when we're moving, doing our moving Qigong, we're breathing, we're getting this whole body movement, opening and closing, happening in our entire structure. Okay? All right. So... The next little thing I want to talk about in relation to this before we have a really good meditate and we're going to join these two concepts together is a thing I call balloon breathing. And I like this concept of balloon breathing because, oh, I need a prop. I forgot it. Hold on one second. Glove, one of those rubber gloves. And this is where we get to breathe our crinkles out. Okay, so the glove here has the same, the, the actual glove material, we're going to take as our flesh and bones, our physical body. And we're going to say it has similar qualities to what we want in our body. It ha it's soft. This glove isn't so flexible, but you know, it's got. Quite a bit of flexibility it's soft it's durable um, it, it has the ability to hold structure um, but definitely not when there's nothing inside it okay there's no chi inside this glove so balloon breath is the way that we use the breath to open this tensegrity okay breathing space room and softness into our structure this is the way that we delete tension out of our muscles 
And remember, the tension, when, when I say tension and I'm talking physically, I'm also talking about the way that tension is physical, emotional, and spiritual all interwoven, right? But if we delete it from the physical body, it's deleting from our mental and emotional and spiritual bodies as well. So if I leave that bit out, I'm also talking about that. Okay, so this, this balloon breathing is the way that we open this structure. So at the moment, this person's really deficient, right? They've probably got some pretty serious issues going on. Their tensegrity, their connective tissue and fascia system is weak. Okay? So when we do this balloon breathing, we want to... Uh, actually, I'll tell Bruce Lee's story. So Bruce Lee says, be like water, my friend. When you pour water into a cup, it takes on the shape of a cup. When you pour water into a teapot, it takes on the shape of the teapot. So when we breathe in, we want our body to fill up, but we also want it to soften into the shape of our body. We don't want to hold it rigidly and tight because we're creating tension patterns that aren't natural to us. They're what we assume our body should be doing. But if we breathe in and, and what I like to call fill out our crinkles, then the pressure, the internal pressure or the internal tension, as it's called in internal martial arts, inflates us from the inside, holds our structure open and allows our body to rest on this chi, on this structure, so that we can remain soft and pliable and relaxed, like the glove, but firm and full and robust and strong. And I was chatting to a group of, I, I hope some of the men from the men's group I put this on today here, where I was discussing about that true concept of um, strength in softness and that idea that our body can be extremely powerful and extremely strong and it doesn't mean tension and hardness and rigidity um, learning about that fluidity which is extremely potent powerful explosive elastic and has all these other qualities that that, that are important so if our body's really deflated okay we've got to and, and i say all the time relax or soften the body onto the inflation or onto the onto that internal pressure. So what I mean is when I when I breathe in this glove, I'm not going blowing it up and trying to take me a shape, but then as I breathe out, squashing it all back down. That'd be like me going, you know, breathing into a good posture and then and just slumping into an unusual awkward posture and then breathing over and then slumping back down. Right? That's not gonna do the job we want. Okay. So what I am suggesting is, I'll come up a little bit closer, is that we go yeah, just a little bit. This glove's still kind of crinkled. It's not fully firm, still soft and crinkled. And we go, and I'm gonna go breathe a little bit more in. It's still, you can still see the crinkles are in it, right? Still got some crinkles, but the glove's much more inflated. But the skin has softened. It's resting on the amount of inflation that's inside the glove. It can't do any more. It's not like it's going to try and squeeze all the inflation into, into one aspect because then the others don't have anything. Okay, and it's not going down. It, the pressure is even throughout and it's just doing what it can. So then we breathe in a little bit more. Still a couple of crinkles, but now it's really starting to shake on shape. The skin again is still relaxed onto the internal pressure. Now the glove is full. There's no crinkles in there. It's nice and open. Lots of space in there for things to move around. Lots of flow. Okay. The glove material is still resting on the internal pressure. It hasn't gone rigid. It hasn't gone tight. It's literally inflated itself. Um, it's taken on the shape from the pressure that's on the inside of it. So we're going to do the same. Hands on ribs, or if you like, you can put your hand underneath your clavicle, just here, two points on either side of your clavicle, kidney 27. And if my hand is going on my lower tummy, if my, you know, my, my thumb there was my belly button, the middle of my palm of my hand 
would be resting just under my belly button. That makes the palm of my hand, the middle, the meaty bit of my palm, to sit right on my midline, right on a point that activates that grounding function of lower dantium, and up here, okay? Now, this is a nice one to do if, especially if you've got anxiety or you're in your head tracking your thoughts a lot. Um, I do like this one for beginners just to actually feel the ribs move, but if you're quite comfortable and can create that to happen, um, without your hands there, then please, by all means, feel like you can do this. But I'm gonna do this one because um, you actually do get a better um, feeling of what's going on. So, and by the way, I'm just gonna talk us through a little meditation. So you're welcome to close your eyes if you like, um, and join in, we'll just go for a couple of minutes. Um, just to give a little bit of an idea of this um, balloon breathing with the uh, Pac-Man concept. So the idea is here we're gonna be sucking in energy with our breath, and packing it down into the body, but at the same time as we breathe in, we're going to be expanding, and then we're going to be softening as we breathe out. So there's some really um, abstract and, and almost counterintuitive concepts going on at the same time, which if we get into it, is really quite yin and yang. So, my dad told me I've got to stop touching my nose when I talk, sorry. Okay, so we're sitting here like this, our feet should be nice and firm on the floor. So feet not up, not twisted, not bent. Feet nice and firmly planted on the ground. Legs nice and open. We can imagine a hook in the crown of our head lightly pulling us up. Chin lightly gets pulled backwards. Tuck your chin in. We're going to lightly align our clavicle over our pubic symphysis. So making sure that we're not leaning back and we're not leaning forward, we're sitting up nice and straight, so you can almost align the clavicle here over the pubic symphysis, sitting up nice and straight, hands here, closing down the ribs. Breath out. As you breathe in, sucking in the air, and feel it open your body, like every pore in your skin is opening, pulling in energy, and the breath out, Softening. Soften your body onto the structure, onto nice aligned posture. Breathing in. Filling up the body, feeling the ribs open. Suck in air, fill up the inside of your body. And on the breath out, soften. Searching for tension in your body. You now a good place for you to feel in first is in your pelvic area. In your thighs around your sitting bones and your groin. Breathing in, fill up. Imagine like your breathing area, breathe, breathing into that entire area of your pelvis. Now on the breath out, consciously feel into that area and soften. Relaxing the muscles, like if your arm was super tense and you realized and you went, oh, my arm's really tense, and relaxed it. Feel into the tension in your pelvis and delete it. Breathing in, fill up the area, feel like every pore filling up with air expanding, opening your pelvis and then feeling into the pelvis and softening any tension in your glutes, in your groin area or inside the pelvis cavity itself. Most people when I do this, it's weird not to have a group here to talk to but they find they're quite surprised with how much residual tension they hold within that area when they're sitting there. So what we want to do is breathe in, fill up the area like you're breathing in to be for love. Fill up the shape of your pelvis. Feel it in your mind's eye, fill up, and then soften. Breathing into your legs now. Breathing, you feel like every pore in your legs. Breathing in energy. Breathing in air. And then soften through your legs. Let them become heavy. Switching off muscles. And just letting the weight of your legs fall into the earth. As you breathe into your legs, feel into the structure. Are your legs crumpled? 
or are they in a nice open, aligned tensegrity? So I'm not, sorry, my, legs, I'm not in position. my legs aren't crumpled in in strange positions. I've got my legs nice and open. I'm in a good structure. And I'm breathing into that structure, feeling it open, feeling that alignment of my legs coming into my hips and softening into my hip joints, letting everything just settle. Like you're breathing in by pulling the, by filling up the pelvis with water and then softening that water into all the little creases. Softening it down, letting it take up all the space and open and soften. Breathing in, expanding open. Breathing out, softening onto that inhalation, softening onto that internal pressure. Let's think about the shoulders for a moment, the neck. Breathing in, imagine you're sucking energy into your shoulders. Feel them pull back into correct position. Feel the hook in the top of your head. Feel into your chin posture. Make sure everything is nice and aligned and your body is open, the breath in, and the breath out, hold that posture and soften into it. Breathing in, feeling into your body, breathing into good structure, and breathing out, and softening onto that improved posture, softening onto that improved shape. Breathing in, imagine your body sucking in all the energy it needs to open and inflate it. And now soften. Relax your body, searching in your mind's eye for pockets of tension and feeling like you're just melting them with your mind. We don't want any tension. We don't want to try to do this. If a muscle's not changing, we don't want to force it. We just observe it the way it is, breathing in and out, breathing in around a muscle if it won't release, creating space and structure, then breathing out and just feeling into that muscle. Feel it soften. Excuse me. <clears throat> breathing in, feeling into the structure of our neck and shoulders. And breathing out, just softening the body onto that structure. Feel the weight transpose through your body, down through your torso, down through your pelvis, into the sitting bones through your legs into the ground making yourself a clear conduit for that weight just to pass through your body and into the earth breathing in opening inflating the body breathing out compressing and softening breathing in and opening expanding Feel the weight of your body. Just finding pockets of tension and breathing in around them to breathe support, to bring your awareness to a specific area, bringing the natural healing intelligence into that area. Use that natural intelligence to open up your structure, feel into the positive alignment of your body and then soften into that positive alignment of your body. Breathing in, fill up your body. Breathe into that positive tensegrity where your body's nicely aligned. And breathe out and soften into that shape. Let your body mold and relax into that shape like water taking on the shape of a teapot. Remember, if you've got one specific area, let's say one of my shoulders won't release and it's sitting up, as long as I'm doing my best to hold that shoulder in correct position as best I can, considering what you know what's going on, what splinting pattern is formed in the muscles, is I actually want to breathe. And if I can't get it, I don't want to physically try and pull it down. I observe the area. 
through my back, down through my side, I observe the whole area and I just search in my mind's eye for pockets of tension that are relating to that posture. And I observe them and I breathe into those areas that are tense and I feel like the breath in is nurturing and supporting and creating that positive tension and that positive structure and then I breathe out and soften. And eventually, if not even right away, but eventually if you do that technique, the body's, it's like the body's intelligence comes into contact with the aspect that's not, that's out of tune, that's uh, in the incorrect tensegrity, that's too tense, and goes, ah, oh, yeah, it's right about that residual tension, that muscle, yeah, right, okay, I should work on that, uh, and relaxes it. A lot of the time, and this is what I talk about in the pain group a lot of the time, that, you know, like if you put your hand on a, on a hot plate, right, you pull away because it's hot, right? Our natural impulse is to recoil from pain or discomfort. In Qigong, you're encouraged, as long as you're not doing something ridiculous where you're going to hurt yourself, but if you're just doing basic Qigong, there should be nothing wrong. But the body can literally scream at you like, oh my God, oh my God, what are you doing? You're crazy. You're crazy. Stop it right now. Do you know how much it hurts? And if you just smile and sit there with it, eventually the body goes, all right, well, fine. If, if you're not going to stop, I'll just... And it relaxes and you're like, oh my God. Like, I think that's been tense for like 15 years. Oh my God, I can't believe that just released. <sighs> so the body's come into contact with itself. You've created that space. You've created the environment and held the attention on an area long enough for the body to register and understand what's wrong. We, you know, we spend our lives insanely trying to run away from these things that, that, are, that are bad for us. But in fact, a lot of the time they're kind of good for us. And if we embrace them and listen to what they're trying to teach us, the messages, then generally, you know, things improve and things can change, which is good. Let's see if this light will work again. Yeah, light again, awesome. Okay, so, um, Where am I going to go from here? Okay, I'd like to do uh, a little drill. So I know most of them I've kept to a seat tonight um, uh, uh, simply because uh, I'll leave any kind of standing exercise or that to another time. Uh, so if anyone who's done Qigong will have done this drill before, uh, generally speaking anyway. And a lot of the time it's called uh, like building a chi ball. Uh, so we're going to build chi ball. And I always go back to, you know, Frozen, that kid's car. I always go, do you want to build a chi ball? Instead of, do you want to build a snowman? It's stuck in my head now and I can't get it out. Okay, so um, this exercise um, I've heard as being called tiger paw palms. Now, as you can see here, me doing it in a bit more of uh, an internal movement way where you can see my whole body moving. We're going to break it down a bit more simple than this. Um, but you can see here that that kind of rippling effect of the, the tensegrity frame through my body, opening and closing. And so this is quite um, an advanced way of moving, of using internal movement to create a tensegrity pattern and a flow through my body that causes this opening and compressing um, uh, concept be occurring like a wave through my body. Um, this wave is like a ripple of momentum coming out of my center, coming out of the brain and spine cavity, uh, rotating, causing a ripple effect through my body. And like I spoke about in the, in the previous talk on this page, like squeezing a toothpaste tube to squeeze to toothpaste out, you know, get a toothpaste tube, squeeze it, toothpaste comes out, squeezing my core, which has all the organs and chi and blood in it, squeezing and moving and opening and closing this to cause a ripple effect of energy to go through my body and this opening and closing, this compressive and expansive force to be continuously applied to the body. One of the reasons why I think animals are so much stronger than humans is because they haven't lost this internal way of moving, which caused this expansive and compressive forces to be happening on their body consistently, allowing for their tensegrity to become so strong, so their power to weight ratio and density of body tissues and substances uh, 
get stronger, right? So that's why animals uh, per pound are actually much stronger than humans. I think we could be there, but because we're domesticated and we don't move um, as internal creatures all the time now, that that system has literally broken us down. And in many ways, um, whilst we've got a big neocortex, which has allowed us to still create amazing technologies and take over the world, in some ways, in some physical ways, we're devolving. And, and there's a lot of talk on that on different forums about how humans are literally devolving. I like to think about our connective tissue network almost becoming like white bread in comparison to a, um, a whole meal, whole grain, you know, rye, you know, bread that's thick and dense and strong. And then you've got white bread, which you could crumple up into a tiny little ball. It's kind of the way our connective tissue is forming through our inactivity. And so I think this internal movement and this compression ability that we get in our Qigong is building this compressive tensegrity system up to build strength. So I'm at an hour, so I'm gonna keep talking until I'm kind of done. So if you've only got the hour, thank you so much for coming. Um, watch the rest later maybe. Uh, but if you wanna stick around, I'm just gonna keep playing through. I knew I'd talk for ages, I kind of talk a lot. So, um, tiger paw power. So if you'd like to take your, take your position again, put the crown, put the hook in the crown of your head. Chin lightly tucks in, breathing in through your nose, tongue on the upper palate. I didn't mention that one before, sorry, that tongue on the upper palate. Chin lightly tucked in. Align your body up nice and straight. And you put your hands on your ribs, or the hands here if you like, or if you want, you can just put your hands, uh, no, we can't because we can use our hands. Um, so we're sitting there with our body nice and straight, so I forgot what I was doing there for a moment. Right, okay, so. Um, we're going to bring our hands up to a little bit wider than my body. Now, the foreshortening of this video when I'm here makes my hands look like they're like really wide, but they're only just slightly wider than my body, okay? So I could fit about a hand's breadth between um, my palm of my hand and my actual side of my body, so they're not that wide, okay? And we're going to imagine like we're playing an xylophone. You can see my hands go yin, my hands flex, they're bending like, like that. And then they're going to press together, almost like we're going to clap. So my hands have gone what are called yang. They're, they're quite flexed. And I open them up. And they're not going to touch like that. But it's just, an, just to show. So they come close together. And then they open. And then they close. Now, it's called internal movement because there is a factor of what our mind does. Now, I don't like the idea of imagination on these kind of things, okay? Um, because I shouldn't necessarily be imagining something. It should be tangible. It should be something we can feel, right? So there's a few little ways that we can use the mind to get in tune with the feeling, but then we should probably disregard those, those tricks and focus strictly on the movement. Now, I'm just going to keep doing this the whole time I talk. It's quite comfortable for me to do so. I find some people, um, depending on their own uh, fitness levels and strength levels, get a bit tired a little bit quick and they need to put their arms down. If that's you and you're like, oh, goodness gracious. If you're sitting in a chair where you can rest your arms on something, you can just have your arms rest on a chair and do that. Or put your arms down, rest for a moment, and join me, and then come back up and join me. Okay, so we're going to imagine we're, like, imagine we're going to go back to imagining we've got a balloon. Like, one of you know, those big party balloons, they get quite big, right? So we're going to squish the balloon with our hands together like we're compressing it. That's what we're doing, we're compressing. Okay, in our mind's eye, we're thinking compress, like something's pushing into the centre of our hands in all directions. Compression. Then we're going to release that compression and breathe in like our hands completely soft and we're sucking in all this energy. Our hands are sucking in like before when we're filling up with energy with the breath in. Hands and forearms and arms fill up with energy, and now we're compressing. We're pushing that energy into the center of our hands, into the middle of our bones. In my internal martial arts, tiger paw palm is about creating dense bones. We talk about iron wrapped in cotton. So our flesh is the cotton, and the bones are the, are the iron. And so we're trying to create extremely soft flesh so everything can move through and flow but with nice dense strong bones 
good dense structure. We've been going on this for a little while. I usually do this drill before I and then ask people toward the end of it what they're experiencing. Now some people if it's their first time and they're just kind of learning about it the mind and the body don't engage enough I think so they don't get very um, tangible very physical feelings so they're kind of like well, I'm not feeling anything you're doing something very strange I don't get it but if you've been doing it for a little while now you may feel almost like a magnetic feeling as your hands come apart it's like you're trying to pull two magnets apart and then as you push them together it's like you're trying to push two magnets together now I personally and anyone can have their own thoughts on this one it means nothing but I don't necessarily like to think of a ball of chi in between my hands I actually believe it's a um, prior receptive sensation created by the body but regardless of whether it is chi or it's prior reception this is the feeling of internal tension this is the feeling of the tensegrity system building, like when you go to the gym and you do a bench press. This is a feeling of our structure learning how to move in an integrated way and expand and compress energy into itself to open and release and expand and compress. Now, if you haven't done so already, I'm going to move my arms for a minute. Please keep going, okay? Don't stop. If you can work on getting your balloon breathing happening and the Pac-Man breathing mechanic going as you do this drill, you can see now, even my body's expanding. Now my body's compressing. My movements have got smaller because I'm focusing on the sensation. I'm not being dictated by the movement. I don't have to think I have to move this far. I'm focused on the sensation and the sensation is driving the reality of what I'm working with. My mind is engaged on the very edge of movement. On the very edge and on the very edge of the consciousness of that compression. Now my mind's going to be engaged in the opening. I'm opening, I'm softening, and I'm feeling my body relax and open and expand. My whole arm, my chest and my body, everything's opening. Now I'm compressing. So it's really tricky when there's no one sitting here in front of me because I can't just ask a direct question, not like this, not like Zoom where you can actually have a microphone. Um, but if you're getting a decent sensation with that, I'd love to hear about it. Either right, if you want to finish your Qigong, maybe you're like, no, I don't want to answer, I'm too busy. I'm doing Qigong, Nicholas, be quiet. Or throw us a laugh heart or something if you can move your hands. Uh, or a thumbs up or something, or let me know. But most people start to feel that magnetic feeling or that compressive sensation with this drill and as I said that's the tensegrity beginning to open up into the body it has a very regulatory effect on our physiology it starts to create flow and movement and teach us how that even though we're compressing and there's force happening there's no physical tension we're still soft and relaxed and tentative to what's happening in our body, even though it has that very compressive sensation. Right now, it feels like there's something in between my hands and I can't, I mean, I can close them, but when I do it, breaks that sensation. It's like, and the, and the Chinese talk about that, this, we scatter the chi when we do that, which is why there's always opening and closings with Qigong, so we're not scattering and moving it. And yeah, thanks, um, Joyce, exactly. People start to feel the sensations tingling and buzzing, getting sensations of energy, getting sensations of chi in their body, starting to explore and, and feel into their body. In the, in the pain course I teach, you know, I've had 
people break into tears because all their body's ever given them is pain. It's all they've experienced for you know, half a decade, a decade, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, my body feels beautiful. And, they, and I'm like, wow, some of the richest content I get is just seeing, some of the richest reward I get is seeing people like that actually for the first time feel their body being nice, being not in pain, not grumpy or angry at them. It's been really interesting to watch them go through that process. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think I'll wrap up now because otherwise I'll keep talking. Um, so with those three very, three very simple drills, we, um, we did the breathing, got the breathing mechanic to happen, which is our breathing and coming back to that very natural state of breath is the Jin Chen Shi cycle, I believe. The most primitive movement pattern. When our most primitive movement pattern is brought back into harmony and is working correctly, the rest of um, the rest of our body falls into uh, alignment with that. So I'm just going to read that comment properly. Yes, Jody. Yes, um, imagination can be. It's a tricky word, tricky topic. Um, using the imagination is not necessarily correct. I prefer concepts. So applying concepts to what we're doing, uh, as opposed to imagination. Imagination is is not reality, whereas concepts, whilst may or may not be reality, can hold a whole construct. I can think of a whole concept of something. I don't have to imagine, you know, going from A to B to C to D. To D. You know, a concept is holding that whole whole concept in your mind. I find that a little bit more applicable. But then once the reality, the physical reality has been felt and experienced, that's the thing we should be focusing on. And I do a really... Um, Maybe I'll come here and do it. We do a, like a body wave meditation where I talk about the um, microcosmic orbit, which is the circulation of yin and yang energy up the, the front and down the, the back, uh, up the back and down the front of the body. And doing this final wave with it actually creates a tangible reality to the feeling of um, the chi moving around the body. And once you've got that and you just sit and meditate on that, then you can actually be quite still and still have the movement of that channel working. So if people hear, hear me say that, twist my arm enough, then you might just get me to teach that on here. Um, cool, thanks, Claire. Great, awesome. Um, so let me wrap up really quickly. Those three exercises, are to give an idea of how we can use Qigong to begin deleting the very physical and very real patterns of tension that align through our body and are tension patterns that hold under physical, emotional, spiritual stress. By learning to open our body and hold it into correct posture and use whole body internal movement style movement patterns, we open up the fascia and we open up and we grow the connective tissue and the fascia networks into more open and expansive structures that grow our body into a more complete expression and therefore begin that very natural evolutional process where um, our body gets better, our mind gets better. If our mind gets better, we can make a better body. Our body gets better, we can make a better mind. If our mind gets better, we can make a better body. And that Jin Chen Shi cycle just going through as we improve and grow into more complete, robust, powerful animals with the ability to um, uh, deal with, put up with, and evolve through difficulties, uh, as well as um, cultivate large amounts of energy for helping and assisting and nurturing and loving. So that real um, softness in strength, that real stoic ability to, to form powerful, uh, robust human animals. Um, thank you very much, guys. I might leave it there. If you've got any really quick questions, um, just type them in now. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll let you all go. I hope I covered everything um, <laughs> adequately enough. Um, uh, I'd like to maybe continue a little bit on this topic and really hone in on specific areas and maybe give a few more exercises uh, and tie this over a little bit more into the Chinese theory for you. Um, but please leave me a comment with what you thought or what you found was um, beneficial. Um, 
course, any other feedback you want to give me is fine too. Um, like, thanks, Dad, I do touch my nose too much. Um, I was trying to be mindful of that tonight. Um, thank you very much. If you guys want to know anything more about Qigong, ask questions on this page. Um, always more than happy to answer. And we've got some great people coming into the group. We've now got over 200 here. So, um, you know, other people are going to offer, offer their information. And that's what I want to create is I want to create a community around Qigong and really push Qigong out uh, into the world. So um, anyone who wants to help that, please, please feel free. Um, let's help each other. Let's grow. Let's evolve. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. If you want to know about any of the courses I teach, um, uh, send me a private message. Uh, and yes, for those watching who are interested, I am working towards getting some online classes happening, um, but I currently have to move out of my current house and the real estate market here on the Gold Coast has gone crazy. And I've almost got a, a second full-time job looking for a property at the moment. Once that's done and I've got some adequate digs to really set up a decent frame, I don't have much in this room, I'm in here now, then yeah, I'll be starting some online lesson, some online lessons. So thank you very much for listening, guys. Um, I hope you're all in good health. Thank you very much and I'll, I'll see you all soon. Bye, have a lovely evening.